one night I just didn't feel that great, so I kind of looked down at my um, heart monitor and I was noticing that it was really running at like 200 beats per minute, and I thought, well, there's something wrong with the strap. But later when I, I felt my pulse, I did realize there was something wrong. Kurt, an active cyclist, suffered from atrial fibrillation, or AFib, a condition that causes the heart to beat abnormally, either too slow or too fast. If you can imagine sitting there, having breakfast, reading the newspaper, and then all of a sudden you have these butterflies in your chest, you feel as if your heart is running a marathon, yet you're just sitting there relaxing. Whenever I'd have an episode, it would make me very um, kind of nervous and, and agitated, really and it was hard for me to kind of calm down. Um, it just gives you a real sense of uh, nervousness. AFib is an increasingly common condition here in our community as our population grows older. If you're over 40, you have a one in four chance of developing in your lifetime. And as patients age, as we live longer, we're having more and more patients with AFib. The biggest concern that we have with atrial fibrillation is that there's about a 25% chance that you could develop a stroke if it's uh, not identified. And those strokes are preventable. Medications are available to treat AFib, but they aren't always effective. For the longest time, I think we just stayed on the medication, but I became a little frustrated by still having episodes of AFib, still being impacted in my ability to ride like I really wanted to. So to me, it was a quality of life issue. Once upon a time, if patients needed more than medicine to treat AFib, the only option was open heart surgery. But fortunately, today's medical technology offers better solutions. Multicare leads the region in advanced, minimally invasive treatments for AFib, including being one of the few in the nation to offer radiation-free cardiac ablation procedures. Approximately four to five years ago, we realized that our patients were getting a lot of radiation. There was a large radiation exposure. And with a little bit of innovation and a lot of technological help, we're now able to do all of our procedures with very little to no radiation. In fact, all our AFib ablations this year have been done without any radiation. Kurt's story has a happy ending. He had his ablation in April 2013 and has been symptom-free ever since. But there are many more in our community who still need care for this all too common heart condition, and we need to do more to take our capabilities to the next level. We're worried because the, the epidemic that's occurring here is going to flood our, our one little cath lab, one little EP lab that we have. There's a critical need in our community to take care of atrial fibrillation. Just last week, I woke up and I had fluttering in my chest, and, and it startled me, and I thought, oh my goodness, could I have atrial fibrillation? And it brought it to the forefront of how important this is. One in four of us are going to develop AFib, and some of those patients are going on to develop a stroke. And if we can do something to change that, then I think that we have done some great good to our entire community.